Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Today is kind of a QA. and a uh, Some of the guys said, couldn't we see all those beautiful saws that you've got over your bench? Well, I actually thought about it and I thought, well, beautiful? But then, you know, everybody's got a different opinion on things. I like a couple of them really well, but most of them are just saws, you know, they're nice for cutting wood and some of them haven't even been touched yet other than get stuck on the rack. So for today, rather than bore you with all the saws that are in Old Sneelock's workshop, yeah, I admit, I got a batch of them. I'm going to show you just the ones that are in the rack and maybe a few others. This was the first saw that I sharpened, and really sharpened well. This is a rip saw. It's in horrible shape. You can see that it's got most of the blade eaten away. Uh, it is kind of a monster. It's got huge teeth on it. And because I was trying to learn how to sharpen saws, uh, I didn't do a wonderful job on this one. It still cuts well, because any saw that's been sharpened a little bit cuts better than one that hasn't been sharpened at all. But this one, it was in such bad shape on the blade that I said, okay, I'm gonna practice on sharpening saws and see just what happens. Well, a lot of what I read said, if the saw has pits in the plate, pass it by. You can never fix a pit in the plate. If the saw's handle is in really rough shape and the, and the medallion is missing, you don't want that saw. You're going to have a hard time finding another medallion and it's just going to be a uh, real problem trying to fix it. Also, they said saws with nibs are usually faked. It's not a real nib, it's one somebody's filed in there because a lot of them got carved off, but I wanted to learn how to sharpen saws, so this was perfect one to work. This was a perfect saw to learn with. And you know what? Pitting doesn't stop it from cutting. The kerf put in by the teeth makes it so that the pits don't really rub on anything. And if you wire brush the hell out of it, even these horrible pits are not enough to cause the blade to break as a general rule and with this many with this large a teeth on it and it being a rip saw it seems to cut pretty well but that was the first one that I sharpened and I'm just going to start on the left and work my way to the right this is a craftsman saw. And this is just how it came to me. Haven't done anything to it. This one was one of the nicer ones out of an antique shop. Uh, they thought it was worth a lot because it said craftsman. I waited and waited and waited and waited and they finally figured out it wasn't worth that much and the price got down where I could afford it. So I got it. It does have a nice etch on it. Don't know if you can see the etch very well. And the handle's in pretty good shape. Got the nice little wheat carving in it. I don't know who actually made it. Craftsman usually has somebody else make their parts for them. I don't think there's a Craftsman factory anywhere in the world. It's just Craftsman hires people to make Craftsman parts. There's one of the screws or one of the nuts from the, the brass screws is missing. So it's going to be around a while before I get to it. It's filed cross cut and it's an eight tooth per inch saw, which is a pretty coarse cross cut. This one, as you can see, is a pretty rough shaped saw. But it's kind of cool because it's a distant number 16. It's a small one, still got the nib on it. Who knows if it's original or not, don't really care. The saw blade is kind of pitted, 
but it's a number 16. I hadn't seen one of those before, and when I saw it in the antique shop, I picked it up. This one came out of my garage. I don't really know where Dad got it, but it's a pruning saw. It has the teeth backwards on it and this curved blade, so you pull it through the wood rather than pushing it. Uh, it's not a Japanese type saw, it's just a pull saw. It does cut well, but pulling it through the trees, I'm not a big fan of that. And the teeth are a little bit small for most of the stuff that I want to prune. So uh, I only use this occasionally. If it's, this, if it's small enough to use this on, I usually get out the lopping shears. This is a pretty one. This is a Henry Diston and Sons London Number no. 12 Spring Steel. Extra refined, warranted, registered. Says patent ground registered US patent office and it's a hard to see these things distant and Sun Philadelphia this is one of their nicer saws it only has four screws they tell me that the more screws it has in the handle the, the better the saw is but this is a short saw so I'm thinking four screws is about all you want to fit in, fit in that handle. Tote. It's not called a handle, it's called a tote. But the wheat carving is very nice. The handle is kind of cool. And normally you'd hold it like this so this small handle really doesn't bother with a, a guy with my size hands. Haven't done much with this one. It's a D8. It's a newer D8. This one says Distant USA. Uh, don't know much about it. There was a time when I wanted to learn how to sharpen saws. Remember I told you about the rip saw? And I thought, well, I'll just gather up a bunch of saws and I'll have some to practice with. Well, after about five, I got so that I was doing a good enough job that uh, I sharpened the ones that I needed and I stopped practicing. So I still have a lot of these old practice saws in the rack. Like this one. This is a cool old distant. Uh, no longer has an etch on it. Couldn't tell you who made the blade. It's got a distant nut on it. It says distant and sons, Philadelphia. Has four screws in the handle. Also has a hole drilled in the end. Uh, somebody carved their initials, and I think it was J H, or maybe just J. It's really been hammered, but it's kind of a cool old saw. I like the handle. I, I like the medallion because the medallion's not a standard one. It's not the the newer medallion. This one's actually inset. Don't know if you can see that. It's inset into the wood. Very fine teeth. I will get around to sharpening this up because it's a cross-cut saw and the hole in the end, well it won't bother anything. It really does ruin the value on it which is why it came to my house. This is a Distin D8. Distin D8s are just cool saws and Emmanuel R thought it was a cool saw too and he didn't want anybody to steal it so he put his name on it. Too bad he didn't take better care of it but then again if he had I probably wouldn't have it. This was one of the practice saws. I tended towards distance back when I first started collecting saws. Oops, never collect saws. Back when I started having saws ready to sharpen. I, gra I grabbed up all the saws that I could get. Well, then I became more and more aware of what a saw was and decided that distance were a better deal to work with. 
This one has five nuts in it. It's a full size blade. D8's a good solid saw. Looks to be about 18th branch. The number that's stamped on here has been filed away. It was down near the teeth and somebody has sharpened it away or else it's just rusted away to the point I can't read it anymore. But it's a distant D8, it's a nice saw. It'll go into the pile and eventually get sharpened. This one is a no-name knockoff. It's a warranted superior. And it was definitely a practice saw. One of the first cross cuts that I sharpened. Don't know how many teeth it has. That's about eight teeth per inch. Or nine points per inch. The handle is kind of uncomfortable. The blade is straight. It does a good job of cutting. If I was to really want to use this saw a whole lot, I think I'd have to reduce the size of this web because it's a little uncomfortable to hold. This is a Keystone Airmaster. The medallion for a distant saw has a Keystone in it. Keystone was kind of a, a house brand for distant. It's a lower expense saw. Still a good saw. Doesn't have quite the bells and whistles that a, a full distant has, but it's a good saw. It was later on in the years when distant was making these. Uh, don't exactly know the year. I probably have to look that up to find out. Maybe one of you guys knows can put a comment down below and tell me what it actually is. It's a nice saw. I sharpened this one cross cut. 10 teeth per inch, does a good job. I'm going to start putting some of these back into the rack. Otherwise I'll have a big pile on the bench and they'll start to shoot up. This is a Keystone Airmaster also. Not quite as fine a teeth as the other one. Handles a little loose. The blade's straight, more or less. And the teeth look to be in fairly good shape. I might have to do a little hammer work out here on the end because there's a wrinkle in it, a little ripple. This is a Penn State saw. I think this belongs to a hardware company or some kind of a store that called itself Penn State because this is a distant saw. It's not a real high-end distant, but it has the Keystone medallion, so I think it's more like one of the Keystone saws than the other ones. But distant made saws for a lot of people. You could order a distant saw with a different edge on it, you could order it with a different handle or teeth branch or anything you wanted, you could order it bulk or one at a time. This has five and a half teeth per inch. That's a pretty aggressive rip saw. Does a good job cutting through the wood. The toad on this is loose. I cleaned it and tightened it up, but I think I'd have to go after it a bit more. I'm a little, con uh, I'm a little cautious about over tightening the handle. I don't want to break the screws. And I also don't want to split the handle. This isn't the top of the line distant saw. But it is kind of neat because it's got that uh, special etch on it. This is an Atkins saw. I live in Michigan. Indiana is just south of me. And Atkins, E.C. Atkins, E.C. Atkins and Company, Indianapolis, Indiana. Still has the etch on it. It's hard to read. One time I probably had it written down somewhere. Uh, it says Smith Hardware Company, 929 Broadway, Oakland, California. Oakland, California. So E.C. Atkins made this in Indianapolis. It got shipped to California to the Smith Hardware Company. And they sold the saw. 
and then it came all the way back to Michigan, and here it is. It's a nice saw, eight teeth per inch, it's filed cross cut, does a good job. This one is a warranted superior, no name, no etch, no way of knowing who the heck made it. Eight teeth per inch, one of my practice saws. Does a nice job of cutting. It's not pretty looking, but it works. This one doesn't even have a medallion on it but it's called a Corsair and I can tell that because it has kind of an etch on the blade. Really an expensive one, kind of like one that you get at the Gamble's store. It cuts okay, I've sharpened it. It's all right, nothing great. This is a D8. This is one that I spent some time on. I like this saw. It's a D8 cross cut. The blade is straight. Eight teeth per inch. Does a nice job of cutting. This is the one I use if I grab a cross cut saw most times. Here's the other half of the set. Cross cut, rip. You can't tell from the ones I've been showing you, but I've got kind of an attachment for thumb hole saws. The idea of the thumb hole was not to allow you to put your finger in there, although you can. Most of the time I put my finger down here. The thumb hole was designed to allow you to put your thumb through the tote and use both hands to do the, the sawing. I've seen some people uh, rip sawing this way. If it works for them, that's great. It's just not comfortable for me. I like to have the part down where I can get to it and saw. I usually don't use both hands. Uh, I would imagine that's something that if you were doing a lot of rip sawing and admittedly a three foot rip saw, a three foot rip cut for me would be a long one and I've only done it just a few times just to show that I can. Those two are my favorites. This one is an Airmaster. It's in really rough shape. Hasn't been done anything to it other than just clean it up a little bit just to see so, just so I could see if it had an etch. Uh, the blade's not pitted too badly. The handle is in pretty crappy condition. I think it got wet. And this is what it would look like cleaned up. Keystone Defender, made by Distin, warranted superior, doesn't have the, the Distin medallion on it, but it's a nice little saw. It's 10 teeth per inch. You'd be amazed how many times you can use a little saw like this just to get in and do, well, actually when I was redoing the cabinets in the kitchens, because I wanted to put the microwave in and I needed to shorten the cabinet. I was able to reach up in there and cut the cabinet off shorter while it was still mounted on the wall. Looks like a toy, but it's not. It's actually a useful saw. And it would fit right in your toolbox too if you were the kind of guy that carried a tote around. Now, maybe you wouldn't want to cut uh, 25 inches across a piece of plywood with it, but it would do it. But for the, the Little things where you're going to cut a piece of molding or you're going to just trim something down, this would be quite handy. At least I've found it to be.
If you have any questions about today's video or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop me a note in the comments below. You know, I read them all. Thanks for watching.